If you want to know who Jesus is, he said, search the scriptures. You want to know how many gods it is? Search the scriptures. You want to know how many churches did Jesus start? Search the scriptures. You want to know the faith and the belief of that church? Search the scriptures. You want to know the officers of the church? Search the scriptures. You want to know what is permissible and not permissible in the church? Search the scriptures. You want to know what should not be in the church? Search the scriptures. You want to know what to preach and teach in the church? Search the scriptures. <laughs> Why? Why, Jesus? Because in them ye think ye have eternal life. Because they are they which testify of me. He always point us back to the scriptures until he said, ye do error, not knowing the scriptures. Know the power of God. I have to stick to the scriptures. Viewers, we're glad that you tuned in again, that your home may be destroyed, and that the word of God may get in behind you and send you running out of your church. Preachers write me and say, why do you tell people leave the church? I ought to write you and ask you, why are you telling the people to stay there? God only have how many churches, people? One. How many? One. Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my what? Church. No, churches. Church. Churches. Church. Is it a black church? No. Is it a white church? No. Is it an Asian church? Is it an Indian church? No. Is it a German church? No. It's for how many nations? All how many? All how many? All Talk back to me. All this is that church, viewers. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is that church. Hallelujah. We believe what Jesus said, who was God manifested in the flesh. God knew that men needed to get right, so out of all the prophets that he sent, none of them was good enough to be a measuring stick. They were faithful, but they all have fleshy flaws. Are you listening? Someone said, but Elijah was translated. That's all right. He had a flaw in his flesh, in his flesh. Listen, the flaw was so great, God didn't want it up there. So he translated him. He didn't want that stuff up there, ain't it? had so many flaws in his flesh, God translated them. So God couldn't find nobody to swear by, so he swore by himself. Come along and manifesting his name, his wisdom, his knowledge, his power, his understanding, his will, his authority. And he concealed it in flesh and then allowed that flesh to take on the name of his creator Jesus and then function under the authority of Christ spirit of Christ anointed that flesh his flesh was the only begotten of the father his flesh was the mediator. His flesh was his minister. 
His flesh was his sacrifice. His flesh was his servant. His flesh was an apostle. No one said, I thought the spirit was an apostle. No, 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 no. You can't teach the spirit. His flesh was an apostle. And his flesh was taught by the Father. By the Father. Who is the Father Jennings? God, Jehovah, Yahweh, Elohim, El, Holy One of Israel, Husband Man, Inner Man, Lord God Almighty, Alpha, Omega, the beginning of all things, the ending of all things, Lord God Almighty. That was the father of the son. What do you mean? That was the father of the body. The same one that was the father of the body of Jesus is the father of the church. Jesus' body represent the church. He had many members, eyes, mouth, hands, nose, but one body. And you bear in mind, if that body represent the church, the body took on the name, took on the name of the Lord of that body. And the church must take on the name of its Lord. Right. We only got one Lord. Lord. Know ye the Lord that he is who? Lord. Glory to God. All right, viewers, we're glad for you. We're going to dive into the Bible so we can hurt your ungodly feelings. Amen. Call your mother, call your father, call your sister, call your brother, call the drug dealer. Call your pastor, get close to the internet screen or the television or the radio, whatever you're listening to. That's right. Whatever way we can get this message to you, we want to get it to you. That's right. Amen. If it was possible, we uh, put a DVD and wrap it around the ankle of a pigeon and send it to you. I wish it was a way we can send this recording on a drone with a microphone and an amplifier and just send a drone through people's neighborhoods. It ain't got to be a long message. Just keep repeating. Repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. I want to, uh, some time ago we had a minister's meeting and I thank God for all the ministers and I want Bishop Ferguson, who's an architect, to help me design this church on wheels. Hey Amen. What do you mean, church on wheels? I want to design a flatbed tractor trailer, about three or four of them, where with a hydraulic system, the ceiling go up with lights already attached, and the walls come down and connect to the walls of the other trailer with chairs already attached. That's a floor. And then get my brothers that got CDLs and get some land. Drive about five trucks and lock them all together. And have one truck with a deep pit full of water. Amen. So we can baptize it. Amen. Amen. Want to get it to you every way we can get it to you. You know when a circus come in town, they go in a parking lot, open up shop. Amen. We want to bring the truth in town. Amen. Truth of God trucks, just label. Truth of God. Amen. Just come in town and the walls drop and interlock with each other. Steps come down from the back and people of all races Amen. Able to pull up on the side of the road, an abandoned gas station, out in a tobacco field, corn field. Amen. And then catch the whole town. Then pack up, move to the next town. 
Amen. This was a vision of mine over 40 years ago. Over 40 years ago, I saw church on wheels. Over 40 years ago. Ferguson, you got to get busy. We got loads of CDL drivers in the truth of God. Men and women. I want to see the tractor trailers lined up with the church logo on it. First church of our Lord Jesus Christ, church on wheels, and one truck alone filled with water for baptism. We can roll in any town, any state, any village, no matter where you are. I won't be the only one using it. Hey Amen. We can send brothers somewhere. Load up some trucks. Hey Amen. Buy some, get some land where we can just rent. Hey Amen. If somebody owns land, give me a few dollars. Let us use it. Unload them trellis with them lights and let the people just come out. Hear the word of God. And we can tell them, here's water. Here's water. What hinder me? From being baptized. Viewers, Hallelujah. God gave me a vision. That's right. Over 42 years ago oh. of this great work that we're now in. That's right. And I speak the truth in Christ Jesus and lie not. God have not lied not once. That's right. What he said. Not one word fell to the ground. That's right. So as churches continue to be opened up around the world and souls are going down in water, in the name of Jesus Christ, by hundreds. As Minister Abraham and I was talking before I came downstairs, how there was one fella complaining about the amount of people getting baptized, and you know they always nitpick at something. And said, I don't hear Pastor Jennings saying about anyone received the Holy Ghost. A whole lot of folk receive the Holy Ghost everywhere we go. Well, right. I don't hear you talk about it. All right, folks are receiving the Holy Ghost wherever we go. That's right. Holy Ghost is falling. That's right. You would think that those that claim that they are saved will be so grateful. For sinners turning to God. Amen. Amen. I want to say to you that is in St. Louis, Missouri, keep listening. We're looking to come into your state, Missouri. Also, you that are in uh, Arizona, you keep listening and watching, God willing. We'll be coming in Arizona soon. God be our helper. Las Vegas, Nevada, mm -hmm. we'll be coming down there. So you come along and bring your chips. So we'll take God, we'll be coming into Las Vegas soon. You that are watching in Miami, Florida. They call Miami now Little Jamaica. Miami, we're on our way down there. Glory to God, they drop a bomb down there in Gilad. We want to bring the word of God in Jamaica and we're down there in uh, Miami, Florida and with our God helper and do a good job. You that have written us from Alaska, and asking us to come there, God willing, give us some time. We'll be coming to Alaska, and I will try to get there when the weather's nice. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And now, 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 if I can't get there other than the winter, then I'll suffer it. Yes, I will suffer. That way I can bring some brothers with me and let them baptize. Glory to God. Amen. We greet all our brothers and sisters throughout the Caribbean, through the Bahama Islands, through Jamaica, through Trinidad, through Barbados, also throughout all of Canada and throughout all of America and South America. My brothers and sisters throughout Australia, God willing, we're looking to be in Perth, Australia. Keep watching. Your dates will come up on social media. We'll be in Perth, Australia, and also other areas of Australia, God willing. Switzerland, we haven't forgot about you. We're looking to be in Switzerland also. You, that is through Europe. We hope to see you there in South London. Then from London, we have been in Netherlands, 
Belgium, we have not forgot about you either. God be our helper. We are being there, dropping it from the air and shooting it from the ground. So God willing, we have a good gospel. We want to work on self-punishment. Mm. Mm. Self-punishment. There was a man after God on heart named King David. Mm. David come out the tribe of Judah, son of Jesse. I believe it was prophet Samuel that was told to go to Jesse's house. Because the prophecy was given that they're going to be a king to reign over God's people. Brother Samuel went on down to the house of Jesse and of course Samuel didn't, or rather Jesse didn't even consider his youngest son. So he didn't even call him in the company. He brought his sons and let them pass before the seer, the prophet. And uh, I, liked, I loved the words that the Lord moved on Samuel to say. He said, God having, chose, having chosen this, yes. none of these. Yes. So after the sons of Jesse went and passed by the prophet, the prophet knew God couldn't lie. He said, he wanted to know. I mean, are these all of them? Jesse said, well, there's one more. He's out there keeping sheep. Young man, rudy looking fella. Goody to look to, mean he was a handsome young man. And when he came in now, he keeping sheep was dress rehearsal. You see, the sheep represent Israel. And him keeping sheep was dress rehearsal because eventually he was shepherd Israel. So God Almighty, through Samuel, anointed him that he may be future king. Present anointing for a future job. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Present anointing for the future. The way God works is so wonderful. A lot of time when God say a thing, that doesn't mean that thing is to take place then. A good example. Isaiah 96. It was prophesied about the coming of the Son of Man. Under us, and it spoke in present tense, a child is born. But the child wasn't born yet. Under us, a son is given. But Jesus haven't died yet. So many times when God speak, he may not intend for that thing to happen right then. But you have to wait for the fulfillment of the vision. David was a man after God's own heart. God loved David. Before David became king, he was a musician. Played the harp. During the reign of King Saul, now, David was playing some music, and, and yet he was a warrior also. And the people began to talk about David's fighting skills. And then a comparison was made. Why did they do that? David killed at so many but King Saul, he killed so many. And the Bible says Saul eyed David. Now, in street terms, Saul was gritting on David. In street terms, Saul was stashing on David. And while David was playing the harp, Saul got so jealous and angry, he took a javelin and threw it at him. And it went into the wall. And Saul said, with this javelin, I smite thee to the wall. When David became king, he was successful. 
even though he was God called, God sent, God anointed, and the hand of God was upon him, he still did not obey God all the time. Now, look how God is merciful to David. Long after David's disobedience and death, God spoke to the apostles about David. He said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, one that shall fulfill all my will. Well, wait a minute, Pastor Dennis, you just said he didn't obey God in everything. David sinned several times. In fact, there was one woman David was real interested in. She was married. And David being a king, he knew how to get rid of her husband. Send him on out there to war. That way he can get bumped off. But David got her pregnant. And David went in sackcloth and ashes and fell on his face before God. And he heard some whispering. And then someone came to David and whispered to him, the child is dead. So God forgave David for his act and killed the child then the Bible said David rose off his throne, washed himself, changed his garment. God also gave David specific measurements, dimensions, to build him a house. It was the will of God that David will build God a house. But David's disobedience calls him not to be the builder of God's house, but because God loved David, he still would allow his house to come out of David's seed. So in that manner where David fell, Solomon succeeded because God could not break his covenant. Are you listening? That's right. Now God told David not to number Israel. That's right. Think of it now. David was a prophet. David was a king. David was preordained of God. The anointing of God was upon David. When Samuel anointed David, the anointing of God was placed upon him and gradually the anointing was manifest. That's right. Gradually. Didn't come on David right away. He had to grow into his anointing and then learn what God wanted him to do. Are you listening? But David numbered Israel in the book of 2 Samuel. And it provoked God. That's right. I want everybody to listen at this. In the book of 2 Samuel chapter 24. And we'll start reading at the first verse. Follow me. And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Now listen. I'd rather have people angry with me than God. The anger of God is not like people. And the mercy of God is better than people. Because with people, if you fall, some of them will never let you get up. And some of the same ones that won't let you get up forget that they fell, they fell so many times. That's right. David even though he was God chosen, his disobedience, he had to pay a price. Listen, 
And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. <clears throat> and he moved David against them to say, Go number Israel and Judah. For the king said to Joab, the captain of the host which was with him, Go now through all the tribes of Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, yeah. and number ye the people, mm -hmm. that I may know the number of the people. Yes. And Joab said unto the king, What? Now the Lord thy God add unto the people, how many soever they be, and hundredfold. The Lord is adding to the people, David. That's right. He's adding to them. What you want me to go number them for? That's right. The Lord is adding to them, to the book described Israel, number was as the sands of the sea. That's right. Listen. Now the Lord thy God add unto the people, how many soever they be, and a hundredfold, uh -huh. and that the eyes of my Lord the king may see it. But why doeth my Lord the king delight in this thing? Why do you delight in it? Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding the king's word prevailed against Joab yes. and against the captains of the host. Uh -huh. And Joab and the captains of the host went out from the presence of the king to number the people of Israel. Mm -hmm. and they passed over Jordan and pitched in Oreor on the right side of the city that lieth in the midst of the river of Gath <coughs> and toward Jazir. Then they came to Gilead and to the, num and to the land of Tatim Hodish. Yes. And they came to Dejan and about to Z Zidon. All right. Now we're at verse 7. Yes. And came to the stronghold of Tyre and to all the cities of the Hibbishites and of the Canaanites. And they went out to the south of Judah, even to Beersheba. So when they had gone through all the land, they came to Jerusalem mm -hmm. at the end of nine months and 20 days. And Joab gave the sum of the number of the people unto the king. And there was in Israel 800,000 valiant men that drew the sword. And the men of Judah were 500,000 men. Yes. And David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. Wait a minute. What happened? And David's heart smote him. David's heart smote him. After. After. That he had numbered the people. Amen. God smote him. God smote him. That's right. That's See, right. it doesn't matter if God sent you. That's true. You're still not beyond being smitten, smitten. by the hand of God. That's right. It doesn't matter how much anointing you have. You're still not bigger than the chastisement of God. That's right. It doesn't matter what God assigned you to do. You're still not bigger than the chastisement of God. That's right. Are we getting this? That's right. Listen. And David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, What? I have sinned greatly in that I, in that I have done. When that pain hit him. Confession came. That's right. That's right. And he told God, I, I have sinned have greatly. Sinned greatly. In that I have done. In that I have done. done. Amen. A person is not wrong because you say they're wrong. That's right. A person is wrong is when they break God's law. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. A lot of time people get their personal feel, personal feelings, their personal views. She's wrong. He's wrong. What makes you wrong? What makes you wrong is this. Right. Are you listening? That's right. If there is no violation of biblical principle, then you're not wrong in God's eyes. That's right. Even if you're wrong in the eyes of people. That's right. Some folks say, but I got the feeling, you know, my I got a gut feeling. I'm a man that believes the scriptures. Right. I have no confidence in guts. No, no, no. People have asked me, don't sometimes you get this feeling in your gut? No. Amen. Amen. 
because you can be deceived by feeling. Right. You have to let your gut go. That's right. In fact, one scripture says, get rid of your mortal mind. That's right. And the thing must be judged by scripture. And David knew this. And David's heart smote him. And after that, he had numbered the people. The pain that come in your heart in other places of your body. Is it always from the devil? No, sir. No, sir. Are you listening? Amen. The pain that come in your back, arm, leg, face, head, nose, eye, mouth, fingers, ankles. Yeah. Is it always from the devil? No, sir. No, Do we ever consider that this thing is from the Lord? That's right. That's right. Yet we seek prayer and ask the Lord to rebuke the devil. That's true. And yet it may not be no devil involved to be rebuked. In the book of Micah chapter 6. Did you hear what I said? It may not be no devil involved to be rebuked. That's right. Have you ever thought it can be God? Well, Pastor Jennings, I monitor myself every day. I know it's not God. You can't answer for him. No. You can monitor yourself, but nobody monitor you closer than God. That's right. That's right. It is God that says the very thought of foolishness is sin. If you think it, you sin. If you dream it, you sin. If you intend to do it and haven't done it, you sin. Still sin. If you dream about it, you sin. That's right. That's right. If you watch it, you sin. If you feel it, you sin. If you email it, you sin. If you tweet it, you sin. If you text it, you sin. No human monitor themselves closer than your Lord. Are you listening to me? That's right. Only God covers mind, subconscious mind, heart, body, soul, spirit, and then he deal with your intent and you ain't done it. That's right. Only God already address your future sin. I said, what, Pastor Jenny? Wait a minute. That's not Bible. Oh, Lord. Listen. In the book of Psalms 139, we're There's starting in verse 1. There's future sin. Right. What do you mean? Sin you haven't done. That's right. And God addressed the future sin. That's right. Listen. Psalms 139, we're starting at the first verse. Oh, Lord. Thou hast searched me. Thou hast searched me. And known me. Hold it. Know me or known me? Known me. Known, that's the past. Yes. So when did God know, knew us? Mm. When did God know us? Hold it. First chapter of the book of first, Jeremiah. First chapter of Jeremiah. That's right. Let me show you when did God know you. If you uh, get this. In the book of Jeremiah. I want to show you when did God know you. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, and we're at verse 5. Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, Before I formed thee in the belly, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Glory to God. Before. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Knew thee. That's right. Before your mother met your father. <laughs> That's right. Before your mother and father exchanged phone numbers. That's right. 
before she went across that country road and went through the cotton patch and sat and talked to your daddy. That's right. Before. God knew the offspring of them too before. Before. They was even made. That's right. Listen, viewers, and you that are here. He said, before? Before I formed thee in the belly. What? I knew thee. Before? Before. Before. I formed thee. That's right. In the belly, he did what? I knew thee. So that means he saw you smoking? Before what? Before I formed thee in the belly. He saw you drinking? Before I formed thee in the belly. He saw you dancing? Before I formed thee in the belly. He saw you partying? Before I formed thee in the belly. He saw you pregnant? Before I formed thee in the belly. He saw you a prostitute? Before I formed thee in the belly. He saw you a homosexual? Before I formed thee in the belly. He saw you a drug dealer? Before I formed thee in the belly. He saw you in prison? Before I formed thee in the belly. He saw you gang banging? Before I formed thee in the belly. He saw you carjacking? Before I formed thee in the belly. He saw you in the Baptist church? Before I formed thee in the belly. He saw you in the Methodist church? Before I formed thee in the belly. He saw you some little cheap preacher before I formed thee in the belly he saw you stealing that money before I formed thee in the belly he saw you robbing that store before I formed thee in the belly he saw you saying you don't know whether you are a man or a woman before I formed thee in the belly before before I formed thee in the belly I nobody knew. can fix this like God can that's right that's right that's right. There is Amen. no event, That's right. That's right. no act of misfortune, That's right. no unpleasant experience That's right. That's right. that have taken place in the lives of the human family that will take place in the lives of the human family that God did not see before, before. you were born. That's right. That's right. That's right. Before. You wonder why you're still living and you were shot and you were stabbed? Mm -hmm. Amen. He already saw the bullets flying and the knives swirling. That's right. He already saw when you was living like a barbarian. That's right. But it is God that says, no, it ain't time for you to die yet. That's right. That's right. It had nothing to do with your fighting skill. No. It had nothing to do with you joining the game. That's right. It had nothing to do with some fellas got your back. That's right. Go ahead. Your life is in the hands of God. Go ahead. He saw you hooked on crack before. before man discovered what crack was. That's right. That's right. He looked at you smoking. Go ahead, go ahead. Dwindling down to skin and bones. And yet had the Holy Ghost reserved for that man right. and for that woman. Hallelujah. Before. Get out of this frame of mind that you are more holier than thou. That's you right. are not more holier than nobody. That's right. That's right. The measuring stick for holiness Hallelujah. was not Peter. No. It was not Paul. No. It was not James. No. It was not John. Right. And it sure is not me. That's right. The measuring stick for holiness is Jesus. That's right. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Go ahead. The Christ. Go ahead. If I'm able to master, go ahead, brother. Live like him. Think like him.
like him. Walk like him. Fast like him. Pray like him. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Then and only then I have mastered yeah. a holy life. That's right. That's right. Go ahead. All praise be to God. Hallelujah. Do you hear what he's saying? Before I formed thee in the belly. Before? Before. He saw you when that car hit you. That's right. Totaled your wheels. Amen. Made your car tumble. That's right. He saw you when you were thrown out of the, on the road. Amen. When I was about seven years old, yeah. I was hit by a tractor trailer. Hallelujah. Head on. My chain came off my bike and I was on Old York Road and the tractor trailer came up. The man was drunk and the tractor trailer was swerving. I went in the state of shock. I couldn't move. I just looked and those lights got closer and closer and I put my hand up and when I came to, my bike was just shred like a pretzel and my body was laying up where the park wall was. But because before he formed me, before. he knew me. Ooh, that's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. Look at yourself. Ooh. Ooh. Hallelujah. Sometime a child is killed. When a car is just going five miles over. I was hit head on by a tractor trailer. But because he knew me, I didn't know him like I know him now. But I had no broken bones. I had no cuts. Because the God of Abraham. Hallelujah. Because he knew me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yay, God, I said. Look at your life. Hallelujah. Stop thanking you so much. You eat by God's permission. We drink by God's permission. We walk by God's permission. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We talk by God's permission. Even if I'm in a wheelchair, I roll by God's permission. Hey? Hallelujah. Hey, God. Hallelujah. Before I formed thee in the belly, Hallelujah. I knew thee. Before, before I formed thee in the belly, I, I knew formed thee. you. That's right. That's the name of God. I knew thee. Every ailment, every trial, every experience that you're now having and will have, he already saw it. That's right. Being that he already saw it, ask yourself. Why haven't that experience done you in? You know why? Because his protection was already preserved while you live. Before, before I formed, I formed thee in the belly. Hallelujah. Before, before I formed thee in the belly. In the belly, I, I knew thee. I knew thee. Hallelujah. Why wasn't you destroyed? Hallelujah. Why wasn't you cut off? Yeah. Because God knew you. Hallelujah. And when we was ignorant of him, he still was merciful and protect us and preserved us. Talk back to me. Yeah. 
Before I formed thee, in the belly I knew thee. So here we are. Hallelujah. About seven years old. That tractor trailer came. Tractor trailer hit me head on. At seven years old. I didn't know I would be some Pastor Jennings. I was just Nikki. Riding a bike. But the Lord protect me. That's right. I didn't even feel the impact. I didn't even feel it. But my bike was twisted up like it had been grinded in a machine. I had no broken bones. Wonderful. Baby. Not even a fracture. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Only thing I had was a knot on my head. <laughs> And sometimes the brothers say, that's what's wrong with you. That truck hits you too hard. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you listening? Hallelujah. There must be an appreciation for God's mercy. That's right. <laughs> if I understand his mercy, then I can appreciate yeah. his mercy. That's right. There, by God's permission, were and still is experiences already reserved. That's right. For you to encounter. That's right. That's right. If he said before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, knew thee. then experience is already reserved. They're already there. That's right. Because he said, I knew thee. I knew thee. That's right. That's right. He see where you're going to be shocked to pieces. Yeah. And yet say you love him. That's right. My substance was not hid from thee. Listen. In the book of Psalms 139 and at verse 15. My substance was not hid from thee. When I was made in secret. When I was made in secret. And curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. When I was curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, my substance was not hid from you. Lord, mm -hmm. you saw what happened to me. That's you right. saw what was going to happen to me. You saw what she did. You saw what he did. You saw what they did. You saw how I went to jail. You saw that I'm going to court. You saw they will find me guilty. You saw how I will have a 10 year sentence. And what you don't see, that God right. is with you during the whole episode. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Thine eyes did see my substance. Say what? Thine eyes did see my Thine substance. Thine eyes did see my substance dying substance his yes. eyes mm -hmm. his eyes but what yet being unperfect yet being unperfect give I, chapter and verse again psalms 139 now at verse 16 david is talking about himself that's right yet being unperfect yet, yet being not being complete that's right are you listening let's go back to where we were everybody all right Back in 2 Samuel. That's what the Holy Ghost brought you tonight, and I believe it's all good. Amen. Listen. Back in 2 Samuel chapter 24 and at verse 10. All right. And David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. Yes. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have done. Uh -huh. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the, the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. When we sin, we're foolish. That's right. Whenever we sin, that's right. We're foolish. Amen. Is that the truth? Oh yeah. Listen. I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant. Yes. For I have done very foolishly. Now, even though David sinned, in fact, I had a gentleman wrote me a letter, and uh, it, it was interesting. He asked me about David sinning. He said, Pastor Jennings.
wouldn't you consider David a false prophet? No. Because David sinned? No. You don't know what a false prophet is. That's right. A false prophet. That's right. Give me Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 23. Chapter 23. And at verse 21. <laughs> a false prophet is not a man that sinned. No. David was called a man after God's own heart. That's you right. would never get me to be so foolish and so stupid <laughs> and call David. Even though David is dead today, yeah. I still cannot speak against that man. That's right. If a God sent man is dead, that's right. Even in death, I cannot say nothing against that man. That's right. Because even in death, God will defend him like he lives. That's right. I want to say, how was that? Because God said his word will not fall to the ground. That's right. His word don't stop when a person dies. No. No. Let me show you what a false prophet is. Jeremiah chapter 23 and at verse 21. Listen. I have not sent these prophets. A false prophet is one that's not even sent to start with. That's right. Prophet means messenger. He don't have no message from God. No. God have not dealt with him. God have not spoken to him. God have not sent him at all. No. I have not. I have not sent these prophets. He's in the pulpit and got a church, but God is clearing himself of him being responsible for being up there. I have not sent these prophets. I have not sent these prophets. Yet, they ran. They up there on their own. That's right. A false prophet is a man that got up there on his own. God didn't put him up there. A man of God didn't put him up there. That's right. He's up there on his own because he got the feeling it's something he wants to do or his wife wanted to be a preacher or his mama wanted to be a preacher. That's right. He can't tell the difference between having a calling and having a desire. Amen. Some got a desire and they call it a calling. Yeah. Many are called, right. but a few are chosen. chosen. Listen. I have not sent these prophets. I have not sent these prophets. Yet they reign. Yet they're running. I have not spoken to them. They're not sent and they never heard God's voice. God haven't spoke to them. God yep. haven't dealt with them. Yep. And God did not send them. Yet. Yet they prophesy. They're out there still trying to prophesy and foretell something and still trying to preach. That's right. But, but if they had stood in my counsel. If they let God advise them. And had caused my people to hear my words. And they caused God people to hear God's word. Then they then, should have turned them. Then. 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 They would have turned them. From their evil ways. From their evil ways and. From the evil of their doings. From the evil of their doings. Yeah. So right. a false prophet is someone that God never called, never sent, never made. He's out there on his own. Right. So if a man of God sinned, that's not what make him a false prophet. No. What make him a false prophet, God ain't never sent him out there. That's right. That's right. To you that says David was a false prophet because he sinned, don't put your mouth on David. No. Even though he's dead, you know what God said about David? The right. throne of his father David, there shall be no end. No end. He gave David eternal authority. That's right. There is no man on earth that's born of a woman. Where Jesus said he gave them eternal authority. That's right. You can't say nothing about David. About David, no way. No way. To speak against David is to speak against Jesus. That's right. If you say David wrong, you got to say Jesus is wrong. That's right. Because Jesus said of the throne of his father David, there shall be no end. And the scepter shall not depart from Judah. No a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. Oh, well, Pastor Jennings, he already got the scepter. He got it and still got it. Still got it. What is the scepter? Authority. Right. What is authority? Power. What did Jesus say? Oh, uh, power. Oh, power. 
That's right. Is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And then John saw him and said, Thou hast taken unto thee thine great power and hast reigned. And has reigned. Hallelujah. Don't you ever open your mouth against a dead man of God in that Bible. That's right. Touch you will blaspheme. That's right. Touch not mine anointed. Touch not. Ta đã không còn thuộc về nhau nữa. Những lời nói ở trong quá khứ đã không còn đau nữa. Ta đã không còn mong tương lai có nhau về sau nữa. Nhưng giọt lệ ở trên mi em đã có ai lau chưa? Và ta từng nghĩ là ta có thể được đi cùng em tới hết đoạn đường rồi bão táp mưa răng cản lối. Ta nhận cái kết đoạn trường, ta coi em như diễn viên chính, em coi ta như diễn viên hài. Cho em một đời nắng ấm ai ngờ nhận lại một trời thiên tai. Buồn làm chi em ơi, đâu thể như những phút ban đầu. Ta hoài lâm vào xót xa, có khi nào hoa nở không màu? Xin lỗi vì đã yêu nhau, giờ chỉ nỗi nhớ mang tên mình. Tất cả nếu như là định mệnh, xa mưa rông còn gã điên tình. Ta đã để đông qua chẳng thể trông câu chuyện kể không đổ hết ra bể sống suy cho cùng thì trong tình yêu anh không tỉnh táo là thua khúc đàn tranh vào lúc tàn canh hối thúc vàng anh chưa vào tay áo nhà vua em tình yêu không cần nhiều chỉ một tình yêu tức là vĩnh hằng ngày nào đời cho ta biết tình là cay đắng trong tình yêu thì một cộng một là tất cả nhưng hai trừ một thì bằng không bắt đầu từ nụ I don't agree with Moses. Mm. Moses is dead, but Moses coming back yes, right. with Elijah yes, right. and prophesied against the earth for three years and a half. Yes, After that, the spirit will be taken out of them and their body, John said, will lay in the streets. He said, then the spirit of life will come back into them and then they will stand up, stand up. and speak against the world that's right that's right you can't speak loosely no. about god's dignitaries in that book that's right leave paul alone that's right you jews that said Paul was no real Jew. You was a liar. That's Paul right. said, I'm a Hebrew. Of the Hebrews. Of the Hebrews. Of the Hebrews. Right. Touching the law of Pharisee. Pharisee. Come out of the stock of Abraham. That's right. Come from the tribe of Benjamin, the first tribe that gave Israel a king. That's right. You modern church people who speak so ill about the brothers in the past My Lord. speaking against the brothers in the past will cuss your present and damn your future yes you will that's right that's are right. you listening amen go ahead when the book says they handle the word of god deceitfully when you talk about the apostles you handling words when you talk about the prophets, prophets. you handling words that's right this book is deeper than paper oh, yes. and ink. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. When you talk about the book, you're talking about God. That's right. And if I speak ill of the ones that God sent in the book, I challenge God's past decision. That's right. That's right. I challenge God's past decision. That's right. But what they got to do it now, Pastor Jennings? God said, I'm the same. Yesterday. 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 And today. And, forever. and forevermore. That's right. That's right. Go ahead. I want to give you a deeper knowledge of this book. Amen. Amen. I don't care how much anointing you got today. You can't be more anointed than the brothers of yesterday. That's right. Did you smite waters and make them stand up like buildings? Go ahead. Did you turn waters into blood? Did pestilence bow at your word? 
Did you throw a rod and a turn to serpents? Did you shut heaven up for three years and a half? If you done none of those things, get your mouth off them brothers. That's right. Did God grab you by the locks of your hair and brought you up between heaven and earth? Did you see an angel with one foot on the sea and one foot on the earth with a sword drawn? Go ahead. Did you have the privilege to wrestle with God until the breaking of day? Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. Did you see God with his train filled the temple? <laughs> Hallelujah. Did you look up and saw the throne and around the throne were 24 seats which set 24 elders clothed in white raiment? Go ahead. Did you see him that rode on the horse and had written on his thigh was the word of God clothed with a vexture, dipped in blood, Hallelujah. and his name was called the word of God? That's right. Did you experience what Jeremiah experienced? Yeah. His involvement with God. Until he said it's like fire. Shut up. Shut up in my bones. Did you step in the fire for three days and three nights? Go ahead. Yeah. Did God come down from heaven and stood in the fire with you and took the heat out? Go ahead. Preach it. Hallelujah. Glory. Go ahead. Respect them men. What they stood for is what we would die for today. It ain't no new doctrine. It ain't no new message. Holiness then, holiness now. That's right. Hallelujah. Holiness then, holiness now. Blessed be the name of God. That's right. Wonderful, brother. Many try to equate themselves with the brothers of old. Let us now praise famous men. <laughs> Amen. Listen at the book. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 44. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 44. And we're starting at verse 1. Uh -huh. Let us now praise famous men and our fathers that beget us. Let us praise. Let us famous. honor. Honor. That's what that means. That's right. Because God is worthy of praise. And when it says praise famous men, it's not talking about in the same manner. We give God reverence. That's right. Let us praise famous men. Famous men. Let us honor them. That's right. Even though they're dead, why you think... We teach and tell you when you testify, you recognize God in the name of Jesus Christ. And you recognize the former prophets That's right. and the former apostles. You don't recognize me before them. That's right. They were famous men. Famous men. Famous. I have a little experience with God. But nothing nowhere near the experience that those brothers had. That's right. Are you listening? Let us now praise famous men. Let us men. praise, honor, reverence. This is so beautiful. Yeah. Famous men. And our fathers that beget us. Our fathers that begot us. The Lord hath wrought great glory by them. The Lord hath wrought. Great glory by Great them. Great glory by them. 